The uh, June 5th, 2019 meeting of the Town Council Governance Organization and Legis Legislation Committee. We are being recorded for pros posterity on the Amherst Town's website. Um, and so we are going to start. It is 10.38 a.m. and we have a quorum, so I'm calling it to order. Uh, Steve Schreiber will be taking minutes today. Um, so the first order of business is to begin follow-up on town committee charge update request. Um, we had went to the council and asked that they request that committee charges, committees propose updates to their charges and that then they would come back to, I guess, not us directly, but I think it's the appointing authority. Any proposed changes initially would go back there. Um, but someone needs to follow up on this. And so that we said in that meeting that it would be us that would sort of coordinate and help and all of that. So um, I thought we'd start the conversation as to what we want as follow up. Welcome. We are governance organization and legislation. Great. So I thought we'd start the conversation of what that follow-up should be, how we should encourage maybe emails or notice to committees to go out, who should do that and all of that, and then we'll figure sort of a plan of attack out and then we can sort of keep track of it as we go forward. Pat. Since we have a member of the public here, perhaps we should find out if he'd like to make a public comment. Good idea. Um, <laughs> so you're, you're attending the Governance Organization Legislation Committee. Is there a particular item, if you had planned to comment, is there a particular item you wanted to comment on? Uh, we were just monitoring it. Okay. Oh, cool. Just some personal, uh, you know, some of the uh, neighborhood issues that we have that we feel um, the council is kind of flying under the radar. So we want to make sure that stuff doesn't get pushed along. Okay. okay. So when we get to public comment, we'll ask if you've got any when we get to that in the agenda, but, but. So, so the agenda is this follow up on the town committee charge. And then the next item is a long set of consideration discussion. We, the council just adopted rules of procedure and the rules committee forwarded to our committee governance, a whole list of things to continue looking at. And so we're going to be doing that, and then it's public comment. Um, we don't have minutes to adopt today, so we're skipping that agenda item, and then it's items not anticipated by the chair. I don't believe there are any. Um, and then we will adjourn, and we'll be done by 12.20, I believe, and maybe earlier, we'll see. Um, so that's our agenda for today. And the packet and the documents we'll be looking at are, can be found on the governance website, the subcommittee website. If you have a problem finding them, let me know. There aren't any documents for this first one, so <laughs> you won't find any. Um, yeah, so you know, we had that request that any committee, town committee long, that is older than five years, um, look at their charges, and if they desire updates, put them into the template and update them. And so that request passed. We had originally said they'd come back to GOL. That part of the request at town council did not pass the part. That part was changed to, I believe it was changed to, and they would submit them back to the appointing authority, um, who I guess can aggregate them for figuring out what to do with them. Um, because appointing authority is not necessarily the creation authority. So we have to figure out what would be done with them. But, but that's sort of the, the thing, but I don't know, and what I thought we could discuss is, should we take charge of notifying committees? Where should we request that notice come from? Should we request timelines? I figure the committees should probably get a template sent to them specifically yeah. and a whole host of stuff. Um, so I'm looking for thoughts on how we want to manage the sort of keeping track of what's going on. It seems to me that we should be notifying committees and that we should also um, set deadlines and timelines, send the uh, template, and that just seems part of what we do uh, because we're the ones that all, uh, look at it for actionability and things like that. And I know it's the council that will approve these changes to charges, but I can't imagine that they wouldn't ultimately 
come back here first for us to take a quick look. So I feel like we should be responsible. Evan? Yeah, I think we had pitched it, so we're, we're probably the ones who are uh, at the very least coordinating it. Um, so what that looks like, I think, could take a lot of forms. But to me, um, I guess the first thing I'd want to see is how many committees are we talking about? Um, so, because in my mind, this is something that could be delegated perhaps to one member of GOL. George is volunteering. But also, if it, attends, if it ends up being, you know, 38 committees, yeah, that yeah. might be a lot for one. Well, I meant just make the list. Oh, you want to make the list? Oh, I thought you wanted to be the person who does everything. No, I want to be the person who does everything, but at least for the moment. But I do think we do need a list of everything so we know what we're going to do. What we're going to do, what we're Well, I guess I was thinking that if we look at this and we say, okay, at the end of the day, there are 10 committees that we feel this would be appropriate for. One member of GOL could probably be responsible for actually coordinating all of this. But if there's 40, yeah. that might be a lot. Yeah. And so it, it's hard for me to envision what this would look like without knowing which committees and how many. Because um, my thought is the first thing is a, probably a, a, a message, an email out to the chair of the committee saying the council voted on this. Um, we could either designate someone mm -hmm. to send that, although um, it would likely be most appropriate coming from the chair of our committee. I'll, I'll say I can send that email. I'm, I'm, I'm sort of looking for, and this is, this is a great conversation, what, the, what our process wants to be. And so an email that says this is what the council voted, we're going to help coordinate that, here's the template, and right. do we want to set timelines? Yeah, I think, I think we need to simply because it can seem at the time unimportant to a committee that's working on something. Um, and so if they have a timeline, it might help them to even do what Evan is suggesting, have one or two members work on it instead of the whole committee. George. So I'd be willing to assemble a list of all the committees. We already have the memo from the select board, which is what I would be working from. I would certainly then uh, need the help of the rest of you to make sure, point out what I've missed. But we would have then hopefully a complete list of committees and then I would also go through and determine which ones are five years or older, correct? They must, is that right? Yes. And um, then, as Evan said, that may turn out not to be such a huge number. And if the number is manageable, I'd be willing to be the contact, you know, help organize it, whatever. But I think that the, the next step would be having identified the relevant committees that fall under this, uh, this uh, 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 charge, whatever you want to call it. Um, if Mandy would put, have a memo that would go out from her as chair, just explaining what we're asking them to do along with the template. Um, but then they'd send it back to, well, they, that goes to their appointing authority, correct? That's what the and, council and, passed. Okay. Yeah. Um, that would be we the, could the, ask that they copy us when they send it to the appointing authority right. so that we know it's been yeah, done. So in making this list, I guess, uh, of at least of the sub list of the committees that we think uh, that would fall under this five year or older, We'd I'd also be helpful to have a name of the appointing authority, right? Each, so we'd know who the appointing authority is. Yeah. Um, okay. And so at the next GOL, I'd be willing to um, provide that list and a sub list and a list of the appointing authorities of that sub list. And then we could go over it and make sure I haven't missed anything. Would that be? So the appointing authority on nearly everything will be the town manager. Um, so I think we can just say, except for planning board, well, except for planning board and ZBA, the other ones we appoint are less than five years old. We created them this year. Um, ranked choice voting, FinCom, because we created a new finance one, um, participatory budgeting. So everything but those two would go to the town manager. So I think the memo can probably just say, you return to the town manager with a copy to the GOL committee, maybe. Um, one of the questions I had was, and this might be helpful as you assemble the list, um, I've already seen there are a couple of committees that I would, you know, that people would say need updated. 
because of references in beyond appointing authority references um, to things that the select board does or things that town meeting does where there's specific references to um, non-existing bodies now other than who appoints because a lot of the appointing authorities are the select board it might be nice to include when you're creating a list of town of town committees a hey this one probably does really need updated this one doesn't have stuff this one has a member from the select board on it you know which ones might have more of an immediate need than others for our reference is GOL um, okay. is my thinking. Now, if you want a second pair of eyes on this, I'd be happy to have an accomplice, but I'm also perfectly willing to do this. It seems like something that one person can do. Um, and you will all look at it anyway when it's done, so I think that should be fine. Yeah. The timeline for us then is next, you'd like it to have it by next GOL? So I think the list by next GOL, does that sound like a good plan? Yeah, no, I think. And then the goal would be for me to send the email out after that meeting. Um, or I might have to ask Angela or the town clerk to send it out because I might not have contact information hmm. for all the committee chairs. But I can coordinate sending it out, certainly. Um, yes, Evan? So um, I started with one thing, but now I have three. Um, so one, um, I think we need to think a little bit about, we, part of this is, so it seems like there's three things that we're asking them to do, potentially, right? One is simply reformat your charge into the template. Any committee can do that. Two is what you just mentioned, which is bring it into conformity with the charter if there's a conflict. Mm -hmm. um, most, some committees will have to do that. The, the third option that we're, we're throwing out there is the potentially to propose some type of revision to the charge. Um, but, and that makes sense for some committees, but then there are also committees that are governed by statute, right? Planning right. Board, ZBA, Conservation Commission. And so I'm sure they already know this, but those committees I assume should probably have a different email because I don't necessarily think that we can offer to ZBA. And if you want to revise your charge. Mm. Right do it, right? Um, and so it, in compiling the list, it might also make sense, this is more, but to separate out which committees are committees that have been created by like town meeting that are, are the, and then which ones are committees that are created under state law. Steve. So some committees have minimum charges that they have to do based on MGL, but that doesn't mean they can't have more expansive charges. Like the planning board has to do certain things, but it can do more than that. The ZBA, I'm not so sure of, because ZBA, um, the ZBA is strictly a permitting mm -hmm. authority, but the planning board can, can plan. Should plan. <laughs> <laughs> Would plan. Could plan. Future past perfect, yeah. George. So just for clarification's sake, at the moment the only thing I'm doing is highlighting problematic committees where they're going to need to, uh, you know, a select board or whatever, that kind of stuff. Do you want me to, um, is there anything else you want? It sounded like Evan had something in mind, but Steve's objecting, or not objecting, but just saying it's it, obviously, the, in other words, the idea of revision is open to any yeah. body. Um, no, I'm not objecting, I'm just... Right, exact right. clarification. Yeah. And um, so it sounds like I don't need to make any further subdivisions, or do I? You're going to get a list of all town A list of all town committees. Um, a sub-list of all those that are five years or older, yep. which is going to be fairly large. And uh, they're appointing authorities. And then I will highlight uh, those committees that I can see right away are going to be problematic. For the, for the committee's purposes. Mm -hmm. um, anything else that you would like me to highlight or separate out? I think Evan suggested highlighting if they were state law creations. 
created under state law versus, so for example, we have to have a zoning board of appeals. We have to have a planning board under state law, but we don't have to have a transportation advisory committee. Under state law, our bylaws might require it for municipal law at this point beyond the charge, um, but there are certain committees that under state law we must have. So I think the request was to highlight those. Well, is that what it was? Only if, the only reason, and, and so Steve's point I think is well taken then, the, the only reason I suggested that is if our outreach to those committees mm -hmm. would look different because we aren't envisioning that they would necessarily revise. If their charge, so, so if their charge is dictated by state law, I don't want us to reach out to them and say, and let us know if you want to revise your charge because they might not be able to. But if, but Steve's point of they can have to do a minimum but always add, if, if that's applicable to all of these, then I would probably, I don't want to give George more work than he has to do for no reason. It would only be if we would be treating those committees differently in this process. But if not, then I don't see any particular reason to. So maybe before I send the email, once we have the list, since I'm gonna have to coordinate with someone at town staff, I can ask them, we can highlight at the next meeting ones we might wanna say, oh, is that one that they could revise? And then I could talk to staff, should these get a specific separate email that just says, please bring it into conformity with the template if desired. Um, it might be best to talk about it when we see a list next next meeting instead of trying to figure it out in sort of this ethereal, <laughs> we might have them, we might not, but we don't have anyone to specifically talk about. Um, does that sound like a plan? Yeah. Timeline, as I create, because I'll try and create some sort of email for next meeting so we can see it too. Um, what type of timeline might we want for a response back. It is summer. Yeah, I was thinking, go ahead. I Evan. don't think this is gonna be a popular <clears throat> activity for any committee, I think it's, but we're gonna do our best to encourage them, but um, so probably more time rather than more or less. And then we can always follow up within X number of months and say, you know, do you remember we asked you? Two years ago. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> do we wanna, tailor the timeline based on some of the information we get from this list you're gonna create, George, with those that we think are more yeah, important I having think, a yeah, shorter timeline, timeline a, yeah, and those right, that were right. like, oh, just get there eventually having a longer one? I don't think we can probably create one today, but yeah, if we, once we get the list and we look at it and we talk about it, that will probably become clear. My, I have a question about, okay, appointing authority for many of these is the town manager, okay? So let's say a committee actually does what we ask and they send it to the town manager. Then what happens? I think it has to come back here. Is there, what happens? I, I, I think <laughs> does he put it in a drawer? Does he, does he? Well, I think that's why we said copy us. Um, there is potentially an unknown as to who has the authority to amend these charges. Do the amendments, if they do get amended, can the town manager just do it if they were created by, say, the select board, an executive body. Could the town manager just say, I accept these changes? Or are they some that have to go through the town council as the legislative body? And I think that's why the change at the council level when this request was passed was send it back to the appointing authority. So I think that's probably a discussion that I as chair or we as the committee more likely need to have with the manager maybe mm -hmm. as to how are we handling committees and creation of committees and all in this new form of government. So maybe we need to think about inviting the manager to a meeting. In is the it future. worth having that conversation before we embark upon this long and laborious process or are we just going to assume that, I mean he is a reasonable person, but maybe even from his perspective he would just say, well you can do what you want, but when it gets to me I'm not gonna, I really don't care. Um, or do we need to worry about that? I'm just wondering whether it's worthwhile just maybe having the chair reach out to him and say this is what we're thinking of doing. Um, we just wanna make sure that when it finally gets to you, something, you'll at least look at it. I mean, he might say, this is my territory, you can't touch it, I don't know. Would people 
would members prefer that I do that before next week or two weeks from now, whenever our next meeting is? Evan? So as far as the timeline goes, because I think this fits into that, um, I don't think there's any particular rush on this. And I do have two concerns about um, doing it sooner rather than later. One is, as Mandy Joe said, it's summer. Amherst summer is Amherst summer. Um, and so that that's one concern I have. Um, and then the second one is that hypothetically, if we draft, if, if you draft an email and you bring it to the next meeting and we all say, this looks great, send it out immediately. They're also about to get an email about the town mm -hmm. manager evaluation yeah. Yeah. due July yeah, 12th. Right. And I, I feel like if you get too many emails at once, you're gonna put some on the back burner permanently yeah. in the town manager evaluation. So, so maybe this doesn't go out till after those are due. Yeah, yeah there's sense. almost a part of me that says these shouldn't go out until like August yeah, or even really, September. Yeah. Um, and I think that, that get also gives us a little bit more time to figure out that question that you just brought up about who, because I actually think that's probably a bigger question than just this, which is committees that were created by the select board, who had either town manager appointments, does that mean town manager has authority? You know, what, there's, there's a couple little gray areas in there um, that I don't want to rush to figure out next meeting so that we can send out an email that might get ignored. So I'll start the ball rolling unless I hear otherwise, and then we'll just, we'll, next time we get together, we'll, but I agree with Evan that it's probably wise to wait until at least the end of the summer, given all that's going on, to actually start the process, and in that time, we might get some greater clarity. The, and the other aspect is we're expecting sort of over the next month or so, a flood of appointments from the town manager. Yeah. Um, and so I expect those will continue throughout the next two months or so, um, maybe longer. And so it might be nice to have fully seated committees before we start this process. Yeah. That sounds good. So we'll keep this on the agenda as we go forward, but not really rush it. And we'll get the list so we know what we're dealing with. And then we'll we'll start, we'll go from there next time. Does that sound good? Anything else people want to say regarding this before we move on? And while we have public, is there any public comment on this? Nope. That means we are moving on to our next agenda item, which has, oh, yes, sure, come on. Please, please use the mic so that the video can actually record what you're saying. Otherwise, they can't really hear it on the mic. You can keep that seat. <laughs> yeah, so I think you might have to press the button. If it lights, it should light up when you oh, hit yeah. it. Yep, there you go. Oh, yeah, so I'm, I'm to be in, uh, in ignorance here. But I mean, so you were talking about um, the town manager giving approval for things, and then what happens in the amendment th amendments? So you didn't ever go through uh, and sorry, I'm not criticizing or throwing change, I'm just throwing this in. Um, you didn't ever talk about whether um, there was a way to assess whether the amendment was a significant one or a trivial one, which might be the difference between um, just getting him to tick off on it or it being kicked back to the original committee. Yeah. I, I think you're right, and I think that all of these revisions should go to the town manager and to this committee because that's our job to look at it for actionability et cetera, right. et cetera. yeah we're in a new government we're not exactly sure um as as we were sort of stating who actually has the authority to create the committees right. um and most of these committees were created in a different form right. by a board that was on the executive side of the government so the question now becomes with the managers the head executive right. is that the person that has sole authority to amend what right. they do, right. or does the council have it? So that's a discussion we're definitely gonna have to have. That was what we were just talking about. And yeah. that includes trivial or non-trivial amendments okay. too. Um, who can approve those? So, so as we move forward on this process, we're gonna have to have that conversation and figure out whose authority it is, but thank you. And can you just identify your name, yourself with name, please, for, for our minutes? John Willoughby. Okay, thank you. 
Could you say that again? I'm sorry. Oh, John Willoughby. Looks like his family. <laughs> <laughs> let us know when. Let us know if you. Let us know when you figure that out. So, our next agenda item is to begin consideration and discussion of the revisions to the newly adopted rules of procedure, particularly, and then I listed a whole bunch, particularly the following from the ad hoc rules of procedure committee follow-up list, and then I picked some to start with. Um, and that's what's listed in the agenda. There are more we could go to from that were listed in future agenda items if we have time. Um, and the document we're going to, I posted two rules documents. There was one that is the rules as passed. Um, clean copy, everything as it looks as the council passed it. And then I took that and I started a draft that we will continue to add revisions to as we go along because eventually these will have to go back to the council, whatever we do for passage. And when it goes back to the council, it needs to show the track changes of what we're doing. So I created a new one which you're looking at, or should you, that's the one you should probably look at that was titled as amended by GOL draft because I didn't know what else to title it. Um, and. And I've now also saved it on my own computer with revised 6.5 so that we can kind of keep this going and each new meeting that we're dealing with this will get the new revision draft. Um, the first thing that I added and the first thing on our agenda to look at is the table of conduct contents, index, and active links to other reference documents. So I will go through what I did on some of these um, so, so people can, um, can follow what this draft looks like and why. Um, so what I did, Word is great in that you can create an automatic table of contents. Um, so I did that even if I forgot some things, which I did. I forgot, to, I forgot to header some things, so we're gonna have to header some more stuff and recreate it. Um, but I essentially used header one for the big rule names and header two for all the individually numbered rules, as you can see in this table of contents, and then hit create. Um, so it can be automatically updated if anything changes, which is nice. Um, what I forgot to add in in header ones was all the appendices. <laughs> so it's missing in the table of contents the appendices. So I will go back and re-header those, actually change, change the header, change the format from body to header, and then I can recreate a table of contents. Is this the level of detail we want in a table of contents? Do we want even more detail for some of these? There are some rules that have some subsections, um, do we want a, the subsections on a different one? I think that's one of our things we have to decide is level of detail on table of contents. Thoughts? Evan, Pat? I gotta like swing my head. Whenever I say he's gonna say the opposite, so I'm gonna say <laughs> what he was gonna say. No. Oh. <laughs> Not really. Um, I don't think that we need to filter it down, down, down if there's a general area to go to. I can't imagine there are gonna be very many people who look at this, although I find it riveting reading. <laughs> Bit of sarcasm. don't see the need for any greater. And if we discover as we work our way through this that it might be useful, we can go back and change it. But I think it's fine the way it is. Mm -hmm. My concern is with the creating links. That seems like a much more challenging. And creating, creating links. links. So let's talk about the index before we get okay. to the links. Sorry. Um, Sorry. But we'll do all three. So the table of contents, we'll just keep updating as is. This is the right level. And we'll make sure when we present it to the council that it's got everything in it. Index, there is an ability for Word to create an index. It takes a little bit of work. Um, if people are opened in Word, not Word Online, 
you can go to references, your reference section, and you can see somewhere over there that would say index. You know, there's a table of contents and then footnotes, then research, citations, and at least yeah. that's what's listed on mine. There's one that says index. I, it, I assume it takes and automatically does it as long as you mark the right things. So the question I've got for us, first is do we need an index? Rules wanted one. We can choose to say no, we don't. If we do need one or desire to put one in, what are we indexing? What are our words that I should be going through or someone should be going through and hitting mark and find and do all of that? Um, so shall we start with the first question of is an index necessary? I'm getting crickets. No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, imagine using this. Um, you're probably going to just go through the table of contents and find the relevant rule that you're looking for and go there um, and then read it. Um, I don't know. I don't see any need for it. I mean, I guess in theory we could create one and see how useful it is, but it seems like it's a fair amount of work to create it. Right? I mean, as you were describing, Manny, this is going to require a whole, you know, what words get indexed, and that's going to be a real, and we have a lot of work to do. So I don't see why we should be doing this kind of, of level of, of work. This is a beautiful document. It's very useful. It's organized. It's got a table of contents. Bingo. Let's move on. Does anyone feel differently or want to speak up to a different opinion? I am seeing no one wanting to say anything differently, so we will go with GOL decided no to index. GOL decided what? No, no, index. Index. no index. No index. Evan. Because I didn't, I'm not disagreeing with George. No. I, I actually <laughs> do, I actually do just, I agree with George. Um, All right. Question was, because Mandy Jo, you're the only one in this committee who also served on rules. You said rules wanted one, mm. did they have a good argument as to why? Um, and where did you fall on it? So we never truly talked about how an index would, would be useful other than a, there were some members of the committee that said, oh, an index would be great because then you didn't, don't have to know exactly the title. You can just look up a word in the index and maybe find where that rule applies. You don't have to, the table of contents might not be completely useful. Um, and this might be another way to create usability. If someone's looking for something specific, they could find that word in the index and find every mention of it in the rules. Um, that's as far as the conversation really got um, because we kind of ran out of time to even consider what it would look like or what we would need indexed if we created an index. Um, so I think on, a, on an academic level, rules committee said this sounds like a good idea, but that's as far as that conversation really ever went is what I would say. And so when I was looking at how to do it, I went from that sounds like a good idea personally to wow, I'd need help figuring out what words I'm indexing, <laughs> which is why it's not done, whereas the table of contents was easy to say, we can start here. Well, first of <laughs> all, you wouldn't index council, town manager, I mean, because there would be thousands, be, right. it'd be useless. Right. Um, and so already you're, you're, you know, how about tax? You want to index tax? Or um, like the motion president. or something. Yeah, it's going yeah. it, to be it, a very. It, it would right. be hard to decide, which is why I was bringing it up here. Of I, uh, we would need a creation of a word list of what to index. And it would be utterly arbitrary. And uh, you know, I'm sure we'll miss words that someone will say. Well, why that? Why isn't that an yeah, index? That Amend, adopt, bylaw. I mean, I'm just browsing through this. Emergency measures. I. I think it's in the format it's in, the size that it has, the, the creation of, an, of a table of contents, the way it's broken down, it's perfectly useful as it is. And an index would only make it loopy, it seems to me. Anyway. So that then brings us to the hyperlinks. 
Um, I am happy to do it. I'm not sure we can do it till we know if I can hyperlink to a specific place in the charter. I mean, I can go to the MGL and find the MGL references and add the hyperlinks into this document. That's not hard. The charter is on our website. I can link to the charter itself. I can figure out, I, I should find out whether we can link to page 38 of the charter versus page one of the charter. That would be very useful, it seems to me. And if we could do it, that I think would be a very useful thing to do. If we can't do it, then I think we should just forget it. I mean, don't M even, you just have MGL and nothing else? I don't know. The MGLs, I think the MGL links would be very Still useful. Still be useful? Okay. Yes. All right, all right. And those can go to the specific yeah. section. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. But it'd be nice to do it for the charter. That would, and I think that would be it, right? Charter and MGL, right? What, um, else, what else would you think? A, I think there's a reference to the remote participation policy. That one's short enough that just to the PDF um, there, some of them, yeah. And I can go through, or if someone else wants to go through and find the links, but I, I thought I might manage the current master copy so I could go in and do the links. Um, but I'll find out whether I can do links to specific sections of the charter. I just don't know. And I like that you'd be doing it, Mandy. <laughs> so, so let me ask a question. Um, the Appendix B, I think it's B, I think we did letters, um, which is the charges. Should we just type the committee names in and then have active links only? Or should we attempt to actually insert all the charges? We can, whichever we decide, we can amend the rules or propose amending wherever that reference is in the rules to make it work. Um, Pat? I think we should just go for links. Um, I think it, it just seems like we're adding things to the document that would be easily accessed as long as the link was there. Uh, Evan. So I feel like my general operating procedure, standard operating procedure, is to not create documents that need to be continuously updated, um, although we will annually review the rules. Um, but we could go through all this, right? And then next month, the council could, after this GOL discussion of do we need another committee, could decide it wants another standing committee. And then we have to go back into the rules and then add another link. I'm wondering if we can literally just link to the town web page that's labeled council committees instead of. So we could, let me ask um, Brianna or whoever's, no, Angela's doing the uploading. If we modify a council charge, is she just replacing the document, which would not change the link on the town website? Because there's a way on the back end, like if there's a charge, and I don't know whether the charges are on the website, if you'd modify that charge, she could go in and say replace that document if it's a PDF, if it's linked to a PDF on the website, you could just replace that PDF with a different PDF and the link would stay the same so that we'd never have to update the link. But I don't know if that's how they're doing it. So if the website has uh, the charge as a PDF so that when you, and I don't know how it is, they're written out, okay. But it says revised April 1, uh, April 22, so it seems like she would never even think right. about So we could link to that, to each committee page. Yeah, we could. Thoughts yeah. on that? Because those links won't change. Those web addresses probably won't change. George? So the link would take you to that particular committee Page. Is that right? To that particular committee? Or is it just to a town link and then you scroll around to find the committee that you're to committed? the committee's page. Right. So it'd be so it'd be specific to the committee. But and that's it. We would not have any other writing on it. It would just be a link. That's it. We'd have yeah. the name of the committee and its link. That's the question. Should that should should we do it that way? Or should we have that and write out, have it written as well? Right. I think a link is fine. 
because again, then we don't have to modify this every time a committee charge is updated because Angela immediately updates them on the town website. Okay, so if the link is fine, let's look at rule, I'm trying to find the committee rule. Seven, seven, nope, eight. I don't think it's quite active yet that, um, nine, 10, rule 10, page 25, 10.3, standing council committees. It says right here, see appendix B for charges. So, I could just say see appendix B for link to charges. Or we could just delete that sentence completely, delete appendix B, and each of those listings, the word finance is an active link. Oh, that's nice. The word, or, you know, I don't know how the word governance is, or we could keep the appendix B so that the web addresses are fully written out. Thoughts for now, should we just keep the appendix and we can make both active links? I'm not feeling any passion for either decision. I'll figure out something. How about that? And come back with a. I mean, it is nice if you, if you are using this document and you're. There's a link right there with finance to take you right to finance, but it's also there for the appendix B, so I don't know. Shall we keep it in both for now? It, it seems unnecessarily duplicative. Yeah, if, unnecessarily what? It, it just duplicates the same link in two different places. Both are labeled council committees, mm -hmm. right? Like if you want to know what the council committees are, you look at the table of contents, you go to 10.3, and then if you want more information, you click the link, so I'm not, well, I'm not sure why we, why we would need Appendix B, right? So I will delete. We, we will delete Appendix B. Mm -hmm. the, in 10.3, I have made a new reference to delete that um, wording. and then to add the links directly in 10.3 to the council pages. Which means we're going beyond into the index too, or the appendices, and appendix B is also going to show in the document, I'm, I'm the master document that will be posted for the next meeting, a deletion of appendix B which will require if we want appendix, we'll, we'll talk about appendix C later. How about that? Um, not today, it's not on today's list, but, but we'll deal with that when we get there because um, we, we have to get there for other issues. Um, so that, that is our first dealing with. We'll come back with fixed stuff next time. Rule 1.6, at the council meeting that this was adopted at, Councilor Steinberg indicated that he would like to see 1.6 modified to get rid of, rid of the word read and put reviewed. So the question is, does this committee um, want to suggest that change formally to the council? I have put it into the draft so that we could see what it would look like. Um, We are on page five. Steve? Oh, no, I, oh I, I, you I, look. I, I oh, you looked like your hand was up, Steve. No, I was praying that my computer would be smart. <laughs> Evan. Well, so I'm struggling to recall this particular moment. Was it just that he didn't feel like they needed to actually be? He, I think he referred to read as being an arcane term and reviewed as more what we were going for of we need to talk about it at two meetings.
but we don't specifically have to. It was the question that came up with our bylaw yeah. on Monday night of do we actually have to read it? And so if you got rid of the term read and instead put the term reviewed in. I kind of like arcane terms. Um, <laughs> and well, I, I kind of. It's quasi British. <laughs> yeah, and um, it all, you know. For exams. Yeah, so it caused people some pause, but uh, I it, it looks like we have some public comment on this, so come on up and... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> University College London. University College London. So just for semantics, um, read implies to me that you have read the entire document. Review implies to me a more casual. It looks all right. So you would prefer read? I would leave. Evan? To some extent, the charter says that bylaws have to be read at two council meetings, and it seems like this is just mimicking yeah. that. And so for consistency's sake, it probably also makes sense to just keep read. And then we can have that great discussion about this, and the <laughs> clerk, whoever it will be, will point out that uh, you don't actually have to read it in all of its glory. You can just... Red feels nicely academic. It's shorter. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like we've reached a consensus to... Yeah. Why do we have a book up there? not change the word read to reviewed. So I am rejecting those proposed Excellent. And amendments. By, we, do we need to vote on this? or is I, it I'm just, the minutes will reflect consensus that we discussed and decided not to with, change. With, to zero, with, with public input. help, yes, with public input, we've made this. All decision. those present, including the public. <laughs> that, take that, Andrew. Take that, <laughs> That brings us to uh, 10.6J. Well, we're going to go back and forth, but 10.6J is our next one, and this was at the request of Evan here. 10.6J is on like page 32 or 28, 27. And this was the committee's, it read, committees have the right and obligation to be creative offer opinions, including majority and minority views, and produce documents. And Evan thought that was weird. That might not be the greatest way to word that. Um, <laughs> so Kathy had come up with some potential alternative wording, which is what I have inserted into this right now. Um, she was attempting to address that, and so I thought I'd put it in here as a start of a dialogue, and her alternative wording would be, committees are encouraged to be creative and have the right and obligation to offer opinions, including majority and minority views, and produce documents. So thoughts. Evan, I'm starting with you because you were the one that started with this. So this is, I'm, I'm not super passionate about my feelings on this. To me, actually, the entire rule is fluff and just says something that is already true and I think it feels like a feel-good statement like com committees can be creative yeah and so to me that's not a rule that's like so my, my preference if I had sole control over the council rules would I would just remove Jay because to me it doesn't say anything other than we can be creative thanks for your permission mm -hmm. um, so that actually phrases me that's exactly thinking that we're trying to encourage Right. And, um, and offer opinions, I mean, our charges literally say advise, right? So like we're, we're mandated, it's to, our charges already mandate that we offer opinions and produce documents, we're required to produce reports, right? And so in our charges, so to me, Jay is a, it doesn't say anything, it just confuses me. But also if people love it, fine. Mm -hmm. The problem with your Use your mic, please. I'm sorry. Problem with your proposal is then we have to remember. <laughs> K becomes J, and it should be automatically done with, with word in theory. If I yeah, delete. But then we'll have to have another motion to remember. <laughs> not you. Speak of the J, not you. <laughs> Do not be creative. Future rule. <laughs> you have no obligation. To Future sub rule. <laughs> So I heard a hear here from Steve on deleting the whole thing, an actual so moved, I think, or a second yeah, to yeah. it. Um, Pat, what's, what's your I'm thoughts? Watch, I'm muddling here. 
but um, I think there's something important about knowing that a committee is going to deal with majority and minority views in some way. Um, and I think that can be overlooked. So I don't know if I want Jay to stay or obligated to offer the opinion. I don't know. I'm, I'm really waffling here. And I can go with the consensus. I'm not going to block it in any way. Well, if you look at the other lettered items, can you find one that even remotely no. resembles this? All the others seem to be telling you something. And maybe I'm missing. I mean, there's a lot here. So, yeah. Sh yeah. Shall report. Um, shall include data report. <laughs> shall adopt a practice. Right? These are concrete things. Yeah. And we can say they did it or they didn't. Right. But in this one, who's going to say, well, this committee wasn't very creative? Or this committee, you know, wasn't really offering any opinions or naughty, naughty. I mean, you, I mean, majority, majority and minority views um, is perhaps the one that, um, but that, you know, that you could have one on that. That one you could argue, you could actually say, you know, well, where's the minority report? And and they say, well, we don't have to provide one. And they yeah. say, well, Jay says you actually have to provide one. So, uh, we'll see if Evan's going to say what I would respond to. K one. K1, in the reports, report shall include the date list summary of discussion, including pros and cons related to any proposed actions. Right. It goes. Right, it goes. Minority views and a record of any votes taken. This yeah, is yes, just a feel good. Yes, it does. Thank you. This is feel good. Get rid of so, is there, an, should we vote on that or is there just the a consensus? Oh. Yes, oh, Steve. <laughs> so, I'm not sure that. I think that committees have a right to. So the one way I see be creative is to, in a sense, suspend the rules and like take public comment when there's not public comment, you know, things like that. So I think we have the right to be flexible with our rules, which is maybe less so with the town council, but I'm not sure that that's creative. So if we were to leave J so we don't have to renumber, I'd say um, committees can be flexible basically suspending the, the rules. But I think, Pat? I don't think that's necessary because every yeah. chair in every committee and also of the council can suspend a rule and say, you know, John, come on up here now. Or, <laughs> or in fact, we've been talking some to you, uh, and, yeah. and which we're not allowed to do during public comment and stuff. So I think that, you know, you don't need that, and flexibility is real different than creativity. You can't have it without flexibility, but uh, it just doesn't seem. Do I hear a motion? I would move to remove Jay in its entirety from this document. Is there a second? Second. I'll go second. So it's remove 10.6 J. Is there more discussion or any discussion, Steve? And from the amendment and renumber K as J. <laughs> I would re-letter K as J. I'm trusting Word will do this for us. <laughs> do that for us, right? And renumber K to J. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I have no problem with that. I, He's I assuming mean, it's yeah, gonna yeah, be yeah, done so automatically. This, exactly. Is I mean, there any other discussion? And I think if anyone asks us, I think uh, Evan has pointed out, we have K1. So K1 seems to cover the substance of J anyway. Mm -hmm. And we felt the rest was feel good and, and utterly unenforceable and, uh, um, you know, not very helpful, really. But aside from that, we'd like to. Yeah. <laughs> Other than that, it was great. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just yeah, noting. That's a comment that we in Captain with the town council is basically saying, right? Mm -hmm. Again, mm -hmm. it literally says creativity and innovation are yeah. the yeah. values that come from this. We did adopt that, is that correct? I don't remember anymore. But did we actually vote on that? As or? as adopting the rules, it became no, adopted. No. Oh, it, it was part of the rules. So <laughs> it was part of the rules. It wasn't a standalone. <laughs> we ever about yeah, yeah, I had a lot of things I wanted to talk about. That's all right. Uh, <laughs> maybe in another lifetime. <laughs> oh, we could. Okay, so I'm not seeing any more discussion on this. 
So, all those in favor of removing J, 10.6J and renumbering 10.6K to 10.6J, raise your hand. That is unanimous. So I will make that change. No, I have a point of order, actually. Um, how, why, why are we saying I now? Yeah, I don't know. Well, I, one word, Alyssa. There was a request made to the president that um, <laughs> that the voting in silence seemed weird to the audience, and so a voting not in silence might be useful. That's the reason I didn't, hadn't, didn't understand it. I just, all of a sudden I was being told I had to speak, and I thought, okay. Well, when he says I in unison, he doesn't accomplish anything other than there's our ability to harmonize. Yeah. Okay. Next is 10-7. There is a Scrivener's error, okay. but I thought I'd mention out the second bullet point said budget yeah. coordinating group charter period charter section yeah. 5.2. So we're just gonna remove the first charter yep. as a Scrivener's. While I was staring at that, I will point out that the joint capital planning bullet point had a missing period after SEC too. So I added that in. Okay. Okay. Thank you for your honesty. <laughs> Showing that. Um, as, as long as no one complains on that Scrivener's error, we will move on to what I did on letter E. Letter E of this agenda is advise on whether to add a scope section to rules that plainly indicates that the rules don't apply to multiple member bodies. So at one point in time, a member of the rules committee had wanted to add a section rule one point either, I think it was technically in five after parliamentary procedure or maybe after authority. So it would be either between authority and parliamentary procedure or between a parliamentary procedure and definitions that was called scope. Um, I could look up the language that was proposed, but it essentially said these rules of procedures apply only to the town council and town council committees and do not apply to other multiple member bodies of the town. And rules didn't completely vote on it, but a number of rules committee members did not think it was necessary. Some members thought it was, so in the end, it was removed with a request that GOL discuss whether to keep it in, whether to add it in or not. So here we are. Do we need these rules to specifically say they don't apply to multiple member bodies of the town? The official title of this document is? Doesn't Amherst Town Council Rules of Procedure. <laughs> QED. Does anyone care to make an argument for adding a scope section? I am not seeing any desire to add a scope section, so we will, by consensus, say no scope. that our advice is no scope. No scope radio. The purpose. Be observed at and guide meetings of the town council. So while I'm staring at this, 1.1 seems to have two commas. The Amherst town council, com I, I think both of them need deleted, actually. Yes. So I will delete both commas and the space between the commas. Again, Scrivener, we're on to F. Advise on whether to add a section to the rules that states that the president shall serve as spokesperson for all press inquiries and for correspondence addressed to the full council. Again, there was a rules committee member that sought to add this in. I probably in somewhere around rule two, um, powers and duties of the president and vice president, two point, between 2.2 .2 and 2.3 is likely where it would fall. Um, the, the wording of this advise on whether, I believe the wording of the 
section was spokesperson of council. The president shall serve as spokesperson for all press inquiries and for correspondence addressed to the full council, I think was the proposed wording. Um, one member of rules sought to add that. Other rules members, we didn't discuss it in full. Um, it was determined that it might not be wise. We were running out of time, and a discussion on that might have taken too long to figure out prior to when rules needed adopted. Um, so there was no full discussion at rules as to whether yes or no. It was agreed that that discussion would probably take too long, and so should come to GOL for discussion later. And a full, well, a full discussion. Because our time is less valuable. Well, <laughs> rules was under a uh, time limit, too. <laughs> so. Right, but, but I think it, it's, it wasn't a some hated, some didn't, and there was similar to the rules, the scope section where there was just a... Right, so it, it, yeah. my initial thought of it, looking at it, it seems like a very sensible rule and seems to work very well, but what do others feel? Do you feel it's something that doesn't, just doesn't need to be stated, that uh, we just leave it up to whoever happens to be president and on the council at that time to sort of figure it out? Or do you feel that this sort of centralizes an important function of the president, which sort of be the, the voice and face of the council in sort of general context like this? Pat? I, I think we should add it. Uh, because it is effective. Um, it doesn't preclude somebody for a uh, counselor speaking for themselves to someone, uh, but it does uh, keep things centrally located, communicated. Well, it would mean that if someone called me up and said, what do you think about X? And I, you know, unloaded and that showed up in the newspaper, that I have actually violated one of the rules of the council. And I personally would think that that's something I shouldn't do, and I would hope the other counselors would agree, but if they didn't, then this rule shouldn't be in there. Um, but I think the idea is that um, for these sorts of things, it should be the president who speaks. Um, and the same, and correspondence is, I'm very grateful that she does that. Um, it could be given to a, it could be a clerical job, really, quite frankly, but I assume you know, there are times when she perhaps wants to tailor things, and she does, but w we certainly wouldn't do that, right? I mean, and you wouldn't want 13 responses to every letter that comes in to us. I'm not saying that. I, I agree with you. My feeling is there are times where I get an email from someone I know directly, yeah. and I add a little bit to what Lynn says, but I, don't say, I send it as a separate email and I don't, and I keep it in the general bland response, but right. I feel like I need to make, so I'm not talking about adding or speaking to the newspaper, although my uh, social activist thing sort of gets clicked when I'm told I can't yeah, speak exactly. to the newspaper. Exactly. Uh, so I'm but that's good, that's good for you to be, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's part of your discipline, no, it, you it need this discipline. Me, I mean, I feel, like 99.9% .9 comfortable with Lynn speaking for the council to the paper. Um, but I, I don't know, it's that, I have a feel, it, I wish I could come up with a great instance or something, but there might be a time well, that yeah. I need to speak directly to the paper. I can't. So I can't. could this be the difference between shall and must, which always gives me difficulty? Um, it doesn't say the president must yeah. serve, but it says shall serve. So does that give a wiggle room for a counselor who, or does it? I'm well, not. May gives the wiggle May. room. Okay. So Steve, no, but May is not strong enough. Yeah, yeah. yeah Steve? The, so my computer keeps shutting down, so I have to overlook. So democracy dies in darkness. Someone else said that. So these, we, we have 13, we've created 13 new political positions. And so we are all politicians and the press is one way of creating an effective community, you know, basically. So I think funnily in every, and I don't, it doesn't exactly say that, but it doesn't exactly not say that either. 
But funneling everything through a single person, I think, gives the other 12 people, they lose an opportunity to kind of speak to constituents, frankly. So a very effective way of speaking to constituents is through the newspaper, because actually a lot of people read that. So there have been various things that feel like dressings down for speaking directly to the press without going through Lynn. And I think that we have to trust 13, 12 other people's judgment as to whether or not it's a good idea you know, to be speaking. So I think we all agree that none of us can speak for the whole council, right. but I can certainly speak for myself as a counselor. Right. And I can also speak for things that I've heard from people in you know, the community. I mean, in other words, I can, yeah. Evan. Yeah, so I actually uh, think I agree with Steve on this. And I would probably actually be okay with this rule if it was edited slightly to say, the president shall serve as spokesperson of the council for press inquiries. So specifying she's a spokesperson for the full council and taking out the word all before press inquiries. Because I think that when there's a huge issue in town and they want to know the position of the council, that really needs to come from Lynn, right? That should come from the president. But I'm thinking now, so let's say that the Gazette calls up near Mandy Joe as sponsors of this campaign right. finance bylaw, and they want comment from us about the dressing down we took at council the other night, right? right. I, I feel like I should, I should be able to respond and defend legislation that I'm trying to move right. through the council to the press, but technically that's a press inquiry, right? But it wouldn't make sense for me to say, oh no, you have to talk to the president about my my bylaw, right. right? And so the 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 word all is what's throwing me. Yeah. I think that she should be the, when there's a big issue in town and they want to know what the town council is going to do, it should be her. But I think when it comes to our actions or our constituents, we should be, I don't, I don't want, you know, if they, if they say, you know, what's going on with how this project is in, influencing district four, I don't want to say, oh, go talk to president and district two counselor, right? I feel like I should be able to speak to that representing my constituents. So um, I would be I actually do think that it's useful to say that she serves as the spokesperson of the council, mm -hmm. but I would get rid of all. I think I, I, I want to be able to talk to the press on things that are about me as an individual. Steve. So oftentimes, oftentimes these rules are in place to make a distinction between the president and the town manager. So who speaks for the town or who speaks for the town council? Mm -hmm. So I think it's helpful for that, that the president is a spokesperson for the council, but that should be it. It shouldn't be anything beyond that. So you would append the rule, you would, you would make the rule, president shall serve as the spokesperson for the town council, period? Yes. Okay. And, uh, George? Oh, I was gonna chime in with my thoughts. I've struggled with this one. Um, in in sort of in line with what Evan was saying, um, that, and, and more with the second half of this one actually, correspondence addressed to the council. Um, when we get an email that's sent to town council at, I think any counselor, if they want to, should be able to respond to that email if they want to continue a dialogue with that person. That person is a constituent. You should be able to talk to the constituent about your thoughts on that issue if you wish to. That it, I don't think we should be prohibited for it. Um, to read this in the strictest, and if we, had, if we recommend adoption, I would actually ask to add the lovely lines the president may delegate this authority as, or as necessary. Um, to give you some examples, there was a letter we recently received from the Amherst Survival Center that specifically stated that our council president as president of the board of a survival center recused herself from that discussion. Um, I, as vice president of the council, took the president's typical response to those types of letters and responded on behalf of the council, even without consulting our president, because she's got that dual conflict with that organization. And I, I just in reading said, I should be the one responding, not her, because she's conflicted out. Now, I could have formally asked her. That would have slowed down the 
response. No, depending on <laughs> depending on when she was reading her emails, right? Although she reads them all hours of the day, um, but but then there's the the other questions, you know. And then for another example, there was an email that came to the whole council asking about some climate action items that I held in my inbox for a number of days, but never saw a response from the count the, from the count, town council president. So I eventually said wrote back to the person individually, not a CC to whole council, that said, I don't know whether you've received a response, but here's a response with some things we've done. And that person wrote back and said, thank you. You know, sometimes the president misses some things. Um, and you can, we, if the, we adopt a rule like this that says for all correspondence, instead of a counselor taking the initiative and saying, oh, hey, I can respond to that really easily, they'd have to go through the president. So I've always struggled with this. At the same time, I do believe we elect a president to, for press purposes, be the, what is the council's position? And even for correspondence, be the, in general, the, hey, we got it, thank you for writing us, sort of responder. So I don't know what to do with well, this. Well, it may be if we just insert of the council for all press inquiries and correspondence addressed to the full council, then that doesn't, it does not seem, seem to me, reading it that way, does not preclude anything that's been described by any of you. Um, it doesn't say you can't uh, personally respond to something on your own to some constituent or whatever, but um, just says that when anything comes in addressed to the council, it is the, um, we're seeing it as the, the responsibility of the president to respond to it in some fashion or other. But that doesn't preclude, and I'm not sure that the way this is written, if you put in of the council, that doesn't preclude us individually responding to it if we choose. And in fact, people do do that, right? So do we, I mean, would that solve the problem? Or am I, is there something here I'm missing in terms of, you know, if you read it, a spokesperson of the council yeah. for all press inquiries, and for correspondence. So if the press sends a, you know inquiry to the council that the president would respond. Um, if someone sends a letter to the council, the president would respond, and we would expect her to do that in all cases. But that doesn't preclude, it seems to me, uh, an individual um, responding if they so chose. Um, and it certainly doesn't preclude you speaking to your you know, about issues that come to you directly, right? Press person calls you up and says, what do you think about Northampton Road? Right, but if a press person, it, you know, if someone from the Gazette emails the entire council and says, I'm looking for comments on this issue, I feel like I should be able to, Absolutely. right? But that would be addressed to the, like if, if he's that the, literally said, I'm council. writing my article on the campaign finance bylaw, I'm looking for comments from counselors, I feel like it, I have, I should be able to, right? Well, my general advice in all circumstances like that is not to say anything, but you're certainly free, <laughs> no, you're, you're free to do what you wish. I don't think there's any rule here that says you can't. Um, and, uh, well, let's go, yeah. Well, all it says, as I read it, is that she is going to respond every single time there is such a thing like this, and that's what we expect her to do. And, but, that doesn't preclude, yeah. you know, others doing so if they wish. Though I think Lynn would probably prefer that we not. Um, that I'm not sure this rule says that. So I think we have some public comment on this. Did we? Sure. Come on up to the mic. When you're the only one at the meeting, you get to comment anytime, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. So I hope I'm not. I'm probably missing some of the nuance of the not used to the negotiation stuff so much. Um, but this whole conversation um, puzzled me because it seems to be everything, whereas it, in reality you have two types of responses, one of which is completely factual and one of which is where people are fishing for an angle for, your, for the inclination for future plans for likelihood. So it seems like if somebody knows what's happening, you know, like your, your, your answer to your um, uh, constituents sounds excellent. You gave them some facts and that show them the response and everything else. Um, but it, if you don't specify between those two things, it leaves you open to having um, somebody ask the question, they feel on, on, on a committee, they feel very strongly about it, they pull in an opinion of one or two residents and present it as a, 
a nuanced response, which may not be appropriate. I don't think it would be appropriate. Okay, thank you. You jump. Is so this, now, uh, sorry. Oh, go Steve. So now we can debate and discuss what the press is. So is the pre so we know two people sit at the press table, um, Scott yeah, and three press people. Three press people. Yeah, there's and, um, our, our, three. Oh no, yeah. two. Emerson, and Dave. Yeah. Well, also uh, Bill. William. Yeah. yeah, but there could be Before other. And, and yep, and there's also people watching at home. So some of Scott's articles. Hi, Scott. Are based on. Um, <laughs> You know, watching us, <laughs> watching us on video. Uh, so everybody's the press now. So if you have a Facebook page, you're the press. So it's complicated. Yeah, with blogs and all. So is this something that we should mull over and come back to in two weeks? Should I add it back onto the agenda? Or do we think we're able to make a decision today? I'll move on what to that advise. we um, have a section that states the president is the spokesperson for the full council, period. I would second that. So you, you take F and rewrite it yes. to say something to the effect that, well, pretty much what you just said, um, that S um, in, I, I, in all matters regarding, um, maybe you should restate it. Just I, I was just going to write. The president shall serve as the spokesperson for the full council. For the full council? Or of the full council. Of the full council. Town, council. town is. Well, it would be council at this point. Um, because it would, it would be, and that motion is to add that as a new section 2.3 and renumber section 2.3 to 2.4. So it would be added under rule two organization after the section of the powers and duties of the president and vice president of the charter. Or if we didn't want a full separate section, it could be added as section 2.2 H, 2.2 is the president shall, and H could be, you could add an H that just says 2.2 H, serve as spokesperson of the full council. Is, is Steve, does that? Okay, so add a section 2.2 H, 2.2 H that reads, Sh uh, serve as spokesperson of the full council. And that was Steve. Who, who seconded that? Evan. Evan. And before I call for a vote, any conversation? George. Definitely. Um, I looked to these rules for guidance, and so, um, and they're very helpful, and I'm learning a lot by reading them, and, and uh, I appreciate very much that they're here, but what I like about it is they give me specific guidance as to what I should or shouldn't do or what can or cannot be done, blah, blah, blah. This doesn't give me any guidance. Where And so I look to these rules, what do I do, uh, what should we do as a, as a body um, when there's a press inquiry to the full council? What should we do um, as a body um, in these specific circumstances that are listed currently um, in, in what we're talking about, and um, with correspondence as well. And what we have before us now doesn't tell me anything. This, re this revised statement just really is no help to me, it seems. So, um, so I'm still back to the question, what do we do when uh, the press sends an inquiry to the council? Um, what we have been doing is that it's assumed that the president will give some kind of response. To me, that doesn't preclude other people weighing in if they want to, but the president is expected to do this, and the same with correspondence. Um, and so that's useful to me, or it tells me something about what the president is supposed to do. Um, 
So I don't find this helpful, this, this new rule or this revised rule, just as president's spokesperson of the council. Does anyone else find that helpful? I don't find that helpful. Pat. Um, I kind of agree with George, and I'll go back to what I originally said, is that I feel like having uh, the president respond to the press is an important idea. But I also, I couldn't conjure an instance where I would want to speak separately from the, from the body, and I'm not, you know, to the press. But I, I, but I want to know I can, because, you know, that, and I, yeah. And I, I honestly, I can't imagine a and time, but knowing me, I'm going to have to speak out someday. No, and I, I, my feeling is this I, allows you know, that. This allows that. I don't I, see how it doesn't allow. That's a minority allow. opinion, or, you know, I don't know. Uh, so I hear what you're saying about it doesn't I, say what. It doesn't say you can't do it. It right. just says the president in these circumstances shall be the spokesperson of the council um, for you know, general press inquiries and correspondence addressed to the council. And it doesn't say anything about what you or, you or anyone else can't do. It just says what the president must do or shall do. That's it. So before I recognize Steve, I'm going to comment myself. Um, the, amendment, the motion that's on the table is just serve as spokesperson of the full council. So not correspondence, not pre press inquiries for everything. And I'm trying to, you know, I, I don't know where I fall. Um, I don't think this limits, in thinking about this, I don't think it limits any counselor's ability to speak to the press. So in that sense, I think it's good. Um, I'm sorry, just clarification? I, you mean this meaning this Steve's? Amendment. Oh, yeah, this, this amendment, yeah, this, okay. this motion, this motion, Steve's motion. Um, but what I do think it might provide is some clarity to the press of, yeah, well, not just where they should go, as Pat said, but a if I or you, Steve, or you, George, call the press up and say, Here's blah. They know that's not the council's, necessarily the council's position. That's not what the council's view is. That is a counselor's view. And so this might give a, you know, some clarity, not necessarily to us, but to the public as to when that quote is a representation of the council or of a counselor? And is that clarity important or not? I'm not sure I'm saying my thoughts in a clear manner, sadly, but yeah. So Steve. Yes. So we have no control over what happens after our mouths open. So we say things and we might say, I'm only speaking for the residents of my house. And it might come out completely differently in the press. But I think that you know, the, the relationship with the press is important. And so we know that this is a, you know, it's a, not a well, we have some important newspapers, two newspapers that cover things in Amherst, and at least one TV station. But um, that we can't really help what, how, how we're interpreted. Um, personally, I have been a little bothered by a couple of circumstances where we've gotten emails saying that, you know, please direct all press inquiries. We know that the reporters have been contacting you directly. Please tell them to contact me um, and send me copies of any such. Because I don't think I, we're in a way where we are a council and we work as a group of 13, but on the other hand, we're also independently voted. Mm -hmm. So we're in a way we're little entrepreneurs. So we're so we, so we're both. We're both part of a 13-person council, but we're also little entrepreneurs that have a responsive, sort of individual responsibility. So, I don't respond to those ones that say, "Please send me your responses." I must say, I too have sometimes been bothered by some of the emails we've received with those requests, which is why I struggle with this. And, and you feel that this rule, as stated could be read quite reasonably as sort of allowing that 
and um, yes, I think it could be interpreted either way, yeah, it, which okay. is why I struggle. Right, and I agree that it could be read in in two different ways. I read it as not precluding what you've done, but I could see others saying, "No, you're, you're supposed to be the president, and you're supposed to keep quiet." So we have a motion on the table. Are we ready to vote, or do we need more time to think about it? George. I feel like I need more time, but um, it's just me. Um, Shall we postpone this vote till next meeting? <laughs> we have a right to postpone. Right to postpone. <laughs> I can really. <laughs> you can use it if you want. I'm, I'm going to say we've. We're adopting it in this in this <laughs> committee too. Yeah, I, I, I am happy if people are not wet ready no, to I, vote because I'm not sure I, I am to, either. Right, um, I, I'm just not so. Sure. You know, shall, we will. I will take this and note that this is a motion to take up for the next meeting. Yeah. And and I you know I will talk to other councilors. I, I will get. I mean, I've gotten five ex or four excellent opinions here, and uh, mine it wasn't very good, but the other four were excellent. <laughs> And, but I will oh, see. Five. No, five, yeah, exactly. So, um, but I will, I will talk to the other council, see what they think. Um, right now, I am sort of. Yeah. Okay. So, we have, by consensus, essentially, we are postponing that vote, that motion, and that to next meeting. It is 12.04, we have about 15 minutes left in our meeting and we have one, two, three, four more. This was, a, I, I will say, aggressive, so I didn't expect us to get through them all, but we didn't know. So the next one on the list is, per the clerk of the council, advise on language for passage of executive session minutes in a timely manner and prior to end of legislative session. So the clerk um, came to me and asked about whether the rules should cover timely passage of executive session minutes. And what she meant by that was when the council's in executive session, sometimes it's six, seven months between executive sessions. It could be even longer. Um, some of those executive sessions, one might be three months before the council new council takes office and the next one might never happen until after the new council takes office. And then you've got minutes that are hanging out there that were with different council groups. And so she wanted us to come up with or discuss whether we should put language in this document um, that would probably go to um, minutes 3.5 um, or somewhere in there that talks about how often maybe you should meet in executive session to at least past minutes, if there has, you know, like every six months there shall be an, yeah, I'm just making stuff up right now, but every six months and there shall be an executive session prior to the end of, quote, legislative session, I think we defined that, um, so essentially prior to a new council taking office that clears up all remaining and outstanding executive session minutes, something like that. So she wanted to know, did we want a rule, it was sort of a thing she thought we should discuss. So... Thoughts? I will add that, I, let me just add, sorry Pat, um, 3.5B um, deals with only regular council meetings. Minutes of regular council meetings shall be approved by majority vote of the council at the next regular council meeting. Um, so we would have we're silent completely on special council meetings and executive session minutes. Pat, um, I guess the only thing I'm thinking about with the executive session is um, how would we define timely manner? You know, if we said two months or something, uh, what if an issue that we are asking uh, we're being uh, the information is being shared with us? but it's not ready to go to public because it would affect the purchase of pro the sale or purchase of property or something. It seems that could take quite a while. So you wouldn't want it to go out in public minutes. Um, so I'm, I think that, so I'm just wondering 
what that means. So let, let me um, clarify. When the council adopts, approves minutes in executive session, those minutes are not automatically public. There is a separate, um, well, there's a separate determination. It just means they've been approved and they're an accurate representation. There's a separate determination of when those minutes may be released to the public because that item that was dealt with in executive session is no longer necessary right. to be kept private. So approving them would not affect the gotcha. do, can they be released right. determination. So why wouldn't they just follow the same rules as other minutes? Why? So the only rules we have are for regular council meetings at the next regular council meeting. We could follow at the next executive session. I think what our town clerk, our clerk of the council was saying is sometimes you have an executive session that you only do one a year. So we just and make so them, then make them one do at the next uh, council meeting, yeah. right? But they, well, they're, uh, Steve? Sorry. If they're introduced at an open council meeting, then they become open documents. No, you'd have to have an executive session. Oh, to do the minutes, yeah. Oh, okay. oh. So you'd have to call an executive session just to Well, but that would only take minutes. a few minutes, and, yeah. and, and, and it's and done. And you could do it at it's the next done. meeting. Right. Yeah, exactly, and then it's done. So, um, and since we can't predict when these happen, and there's the possibility that you described that's, that where you could have a body going out of existence and some minutes still not approved by it, why not just make them do it the next council meeting and we just take a few minutes and, mm -hmm. and take care of it? You know, it'd be a nice break. We go back there and yeah. have a few so drinks. <laughs> would this be, this probably would be an amendment of 3.5B, either three or adding a B4. Um, B3 is the one that I read of 3.5B3, it's on page eight or nine. Um, minutes of regular council meetings shall be approved by majority vote of the council at the next regular council meeting. Um, we could maybe add a regular council meetings comma include, or we could add a B4 that says minutes of executive session shall be approved by majority vote of the council at the next regular council meeting in an executive, in an executive session, session or something that, that, that say at the next meeting. Yeah. So that essentially you are calling an executive session solely to approve minutes. Okay. Then, then it's an endless loop because then there have to be minutes of that executive. <laughs> no, I don't think you need. Uh, no, you would. <laughs> you'd have to. You'd have to. Because yeah, now there's an executive session. Yeah, there the must sole be purpose a is to approve system. the minutes. <laughs> so then we have minutes of that executive. Right. <laughs> oh, no. oh, he'll never return. Just Charlie on the inside. What a, what a Shall I ask the town, the clerk of the council, if she has suggested yeah. land yeah. language? So an, isn't there? An, yeah. Isn't there another option, which is the town clerk sends out the draft of the executive committee and they're considered approved by consent if nobody objects? I don't see why we can't approve them in open session since we're not reading them and they're not, you know, uh, right? No, it just, I mean, they... If, if they are presented in open session, they are public documents and so they don't maintain the, the right. ability to keep them private that an executive session does. It's well, just a state okay. law thing. All right, so then I guess we need the clerk's advice as to how to yeah. word this so that we can actually approve them without becoming committed to an endless series of executive <laughs> sessions. <laughs> okay, so I will email the clerk of the council to see if she has suggested wording so that we don't run into an endless loop of, well, the idea is we'd, like to get it done yeah, we'd like to get it done at the next meeting, but do we need, and we don't want endless loops of next meetings. Uh, nine minutes, we might be able to do, um, you think H, advise on whether the council should adopt a standardized council committee policy for approval of minutes or leave it up to each committee. Hmm. Thoughts? Uh, Evan said we could do H, so I'm going to Evan first. Well, Evan. <laughs> no, I, I a single, a single process. I mean, there are very easy ways to do minutes and um, approval of minutes. And uh, so perhaps choosing the easiest one and the quickest one would be, but I don't know. And then just saying everyone should do this. They, they'll love us for it, right? That's the question. Do we want standardized I mean, you can have a, approval you can appoint for someone, council committees? Appoint someone who simply who looks over the minutes and 
approves them, right? Mm -hmm. That's allowed. Yeah. That's um, one of the ways, yeah. Yeah, which I like. <laughs> as long as it's not you. <laughs> let the minute, let the minute show I'm staring at Mandy. But, uh, <laughs> or we could pick someone else. <laughs> <laughs> as long as it's not George. Evan. So um, it, related to this but not this rule is I do actually think the council needs a standard minutes template for all committees to use, which I don't think is part of the rules. I actually think it's something that should come out of GOL because I do think that if someone wants to, if the public wants to read the minutes, if there's inconsistency, it's hard to get a sense of that. Um, that's a recommendation from GOL, that's a policy, I don't think that's a rule. As far as adoption of minutes, I think it's fine to say the committee can decide what they yeah. like. Uh, bylaw review, we, he, you know, the, the chair literally goes, does anyone see any problems? And we go, nope, and he goes, all right, they're adopted, right? I mean, it's just by consensus, right? Yeah. Others vote. but. There are, there are other there are people on the council who might feel uncomfortable not having an actual vote on the minutes, right? Um, so I think that letting committees decide how they want to approve minutes is probably fine. All existence is marked by suffering, so there you go. <laughs> I, like I agree with Evan. Um, allow it, let each committee decide for themselves. Anyone disagree? So by consensus, it sounds like we are going to advise that we leave it up to each council committee and therefore no amendments to these rules need made. I do like Evan's suggestion, and GOI will take this up, of, of creating a standard way of doing minutes. Yeah. I yes. Think, um, this is be very good. Along with a standard minute taking. That makes it easier to standardize. All right, yeah. that, that's, that may be it. Okay, that leaves us with I and J, but um, let's do J, because I think we can actually do J, but I is going to take some time. Right. So J, there, there are three options if you open up the document that was created that had all of these listed from rules. I think that was part of this packet, um, the list O stuff from rules. Um, there are three, in some sense, I drafted three potential options for this, and I'll give you a history once I write my history on H here. Is it 11? Uh, potentially, the financial measure one. I'm sorry, where are we here? Um, the, the, yeah, that last one. The last one. And this is advise on language for automatic or non-automatic referral of financial measures exempting the budgets submitted under Charter Section 5.5. .5. So where this comes from is the current rules, I believe, are the first one we adopted. The financial measures of all measures authorizing a loan, the levying of a tax, or the expenditure of money shall be referred to the Finance Committee when received by the Council. The Council shall make the referral no, that one's different. Um, uh, I think the third one is our current one. Let me just go find our current one just so I can read what we currently have. Um, and that is bylaws, um, referrals. Financial measures, all measures authorizing a loan, the levying of a tax, or the expenditure of money shall be referred to the Finance Committee when received by the Council. The Council shall make the referral at the next regular Council meeting. So that is our current rules. Um, that doesn't, is not automatic referral. That requires us to vote to refer everything. That's our current rule. Um, so the history around this is Section 5.5. We originally had an automatic referral, but section 5.5 .5 of the, bu the budget document says that immediately upon its receipt of the proposed budget, the town council shall refer the budget to the town council's finance committee. The finance committee shall, will review thoroughly the budget and make a presentation and recommendation to the full town council within 30 days of referral. If there's an automatic referral of the budget, that means that the finance committee must make its presentation by May 30th every year. Because, or earlier, if the manager submits the budget earlier because it's 30 days of referral per the charter. We, as you saw this year, referred 
specifically on June 6th, on May 6th, which allowed us to have that presentation June 3rd. Um, if it had been automatically referred on, June, on May 1, they would have had to do the presentation like the 17th or we would have had to have another meeting in May to make that 30 days. So there was concern about automatic referral of the budget, not necessarily automatic referral of other finance items. Um, there's a difference of opinion of whether this section of the charter even allows us to vote that referral at a separate meeting or whether May 1 is the referral because it says immediately upon its receipt of the proposed budget, the town council shall refer. There's at least one counselor that believes that means May 1 it's referred no matter what we do in the rules and May 30 is when the report needs to come back. Other counselors believe differently. Um, so this is why it's here to discuss is this the right one that all finance measures need to be a specific vote referral, whether we should go back and um, modify it so that they are automatically referred. That's the third one. All measures authorizing a loan, the levying of a tax, or the expenditure of money shall be automatically referred to the Finance Committee and received by the Council. That would be everything. The middle one is the one that accepts the budget under 5.5 .5 to give the Finance Committee slightly more discretion, maybe, on when that 30 days final is finished. And so that's the middle one of these three options, all measures authorizing a loan, the levying of a tax, or the expenditure of money, except for budgets submitted under Charter Section 5.5, .5, shall be automatically referred to the Finance Committee when the, received by the Council. The President shall notify the Council of the referral at the next council, regular Council meeting. So that one accepts the budget but allows for automatic referral of everything else so that we don't have to formally in a Council meeting refer another measure, levying of a tax or authorizing a loan specifically. We'll be done if we can pause this discussion if people believe, okay. If people think we can, we'll do it. Evan. So, yep. <laughs> I would um, maybe defer to someone who perhaps served on the Charter Commission for their interpretation of the Charter's language. To me, I would, I would personally read the language literally as the council gets it and immediately upon receipt, it goes to the Finance Committee. To me, that says the Finance Committee gets it May 1. Do you have a different interpretation? So that is the interpretation of someone else, um, another counselor. My interpretation is that the immediately was there for to prevent the council from holding the budget without referring it to the finance committee for six weeks. Um, that the word the town council shall refer requires a vote of the council or some uh, rule and agreement. Um, otherwise, we could have just as the charter commission said, you know, action on the budget, the proposed budget immediately on receipt goes to the Finance Committee. The Finance Committee reports out by May 30. There would be no need if we intended that immediate to not need a vote to put just 30 days. We could have just said May 30 or May 31, but we said 30 days from referral. If it's automatic on the day it's received, we should have just, as a Charter Commission, said May 30. And since we didn't, I believe it was slightly intentional. <laughs> My memory is not that solid. Um, we, there were other things that we actually did put dates down, especially in this finance article. You will see things like May 1, June 1, not, you know, there's a lot of stuff that is April 1, not later than May 1. You know, there's a lot of things that have specific days, n dates, not number of days. Um, so, I think it allows for that. Um, if, if the manager submits it April 15, that means finance committee has to come out May 15 if it's an automatic referral. Um, again, like I said, there's differences of interpretation. So the question is, do we want to change anything at all in the rules or not? Do we want to try and automatically refer everything, not everything?
no one here is on finance. So <laughs> the finance committee was, was slightly there? against um, a May 30 deadline every year simply because with Memorial Day right around that time every year, it will require the council meet. It will require, if you look at a calendar, if we can't meet that Monday and we have to meet the Monday before, essentially the Finance Committee has to do its review in 21 days, potentially. If May 1, they might have, or we're adding a meeting on a Wednesday or a Tuesday or something like that. Five, five, five in the charter in the is the action. A. The last sentence. Yeah. So the finance committee does not like the automatic referral of the budget because it is given when Memorial Day happens, essentially turns it into a twenty-one day review if it's submitted on May 1. So I'll just state that Pat said she's favoring the middle of the three, which is the automatic referral accepting the budget. Automatic referral of everything except the budget. Yes. Yeah. Yes. We do not have to decide this tonight, today, because we're running out of time. Um, if we want to, we think we need to think about it and talk to people, we can take this up. Evan? Yeah, I mean, I think that the middle one makes the most sense given the dilemma you presented. I, 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 I mean, reading 55A, I still really do feel like, I, I understand what you're saying, Mandy Jo. Yep. Um, it, it just seems like it reads to me as the moment we receive the budget, mm -hmm. it, it go, it's referred to finance. So it's, it's a little tricky there. Um, I wanna throw out one other option that I actually think is probably a terrible idea, but just yep. for the purpose of discussion, is we could also, um, I don't, I don't think the charter, does the charter define computation of days? Yes. And what is it? Oh, the charter does. I couldn't find that in the charter. The charter does. It's in, defin it's, it's in section nine, general provisions. general provisions of nine, and it is, um, let me find, nine five, computation of time. Um, when things are above seven days, um, everything's included, um, except if, the last, if the last day of the period is a Saturday, Sunday, or holiday, no matter whether it's above or below seven days, then it's popped over to the next day. <laughs> and we copied that into the rules. My suggestion was gonna be, we could always change computation of days in the rules, but, if, but that's because I couldn't find it in the charter, but of course, yeah. it's there, so never mind. So if the 30th day was Memorial Day actually, then it would pop over to Tuesday, but that would then, you're still meeting the Monday before Memorial Day to hear this presentation and report um, if you do it. It sounds like given our time, we'll put this on next week's agenda and people can think about it. So I will highlight it for next week's agenda. Is there any more public comment? I see none. Um, Adoption of the May 22nd minutes will be postponed until the next meeting. I don't have any items not anticipated by myself 48 hours in advance. Does anyone else? Not seeing any, that one is done. I'll take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Uh, Pat moved. Steve is seconding. Write down those motions and seconds, Steve. You're taking the minutes. Um, it was moved and seconded. It was moved and seconded, and all those in favor? Unanimous with one absent, which is George. Uh, we are adjourned at 1227.